This is a presentation on idiopathic osteosclerosis, created by Hannah Hoffmeyer, Christine Scanlon, Jordan Brozick, Bridget McKeegan, Caitlin Harvey, and Tommy Waters. Idiopathic osteosclerosis, also known as enostosis and dense bone islands, is defined as localized, non-cancerous growths of cortical bone into trabecular bone. These lesions are developmental variations in the normal bone structure, as opposed to acquired variations. Idiopathic osteosclerosis lesions are variable in shape, ranging from round to elliptical to irregular shaped. The current literature states that there are no predispositions based on age or sex with these lesions. The most common regions for idiopathic osteosclerosis to occur are the mandibular, premolar, and first molar regions, although these lesions may occur at any location in the body. The clinical findings associated with idiopathic osteosclerosis could be considered insignificant because these lesions are typically asymptomatic and the teeth associated are vital. However, if the lesion is located immediately apical to a tooth, it has the chance of inducing external root resorption. Additionally, the growths could impede tooth eruption or possibly contribute to tooth displacement within the patient's arch. These situations are very rare, and most idiopathic osteosclerosis encountered over the course of a clinician's career will be asymptomatic lesions. Radiographically, idiopathic osteosclerosis is seen as a well-defined lesion, although it may blend in with surrounding trabecular bone due to its lack of a radiolucent rim or capsule. It is usually a uniformly radioopaque lesion, but it can have a ground glass appearance. Idiopathic osteosclerosis may be seen in the apical regions of teeth, interradicular regions, or with no attachment at all. Figure 1 shows a classic example of idiopathic osteosclerosis. This lesion is located in the premolar and first molar region of the left mandible. Figure 2 shows another typical example. This lesion is radioopaque and is also located in the left mandible. Figure 3 is a CT image of idiopathic osteosclerosis in the apical region, lacking a radiolucent rim. Figure 4 provides an illustration of the variety we may see with idiopathic osteosclerosis. Image A shows an interradicular lesion. Image B is an interradicular and separate lesion. Image C is an apical interradicular lesion. Image D is an apical lesion. Lastly, image E is a separate, localized lesion. Condensing osteitis is defined by the American Association of Endodontists Glossary of Endodontic Terms as a localized bony reaction secondary to low-grade inflammation and usually associated with the apex of an affected tooth. Condensing osteitis occurs with non-vital teeth and can be radiographically seen near teeth with inflamed pulp most often in the periapical region. This differs from idiopathic osteosclerosis, which occurs with vital teeth and is not linked to chronic inflammation. Hence, a tooth vitality test would be the best way to differentially diagnose. Figure 5 is an example of condensing osteitis, displaying increased bone production around endodontically treated, non-vital tooth number 30. Figure 6 displays condensing osteitis associated with periodontal disease on a molar in the left lower quadrant. Periapical cemento-osseous dysplasia is a benign fibroosseous dysplastic lesion, termed PCOD for short. The lesion occurs in three stages. The early phase is osteolytic, the middle phase is cementoblastic, and lastly, the mature phase is osteogenic. Radiographically, the lesion will first appear radiolucent in the osteolytic phase, then will appear as a mix of radiolucent and radiopaque in the cementoblast phase, and terminally in the osteogenic phase as a radiopaque round or oval lesion with a well-defined radiolucent sclerotic border. This is in contrast to the radiographic appearance of idiopathic osteosclerosis, which lacks a radiolucent rim or capsule. PCOD lesions occur with vital teeth and are most common in the anterior mandible incisor region, whereas idiopathic osteosclerosis also occurs with vital teeth, but can occur at any location, 
most likely in the mandibular premolar and molar region. PCOD lesions are most likely to be seen in middle-aged African-American females, while idiopathic osteosclerosis has no predictors with age, gender, or race. Figure 7 exhibits the classic appearance of PCOD, showing two right lateral canine periapical radiographs and a mandibular central incisor periapical radiograph, exhibiting mixed density lesions surrounded by a radiolucent rim apical to vital teeth. Hypercementosis occurs when there is excess deposition of cementum on the roots of teeth. There is a clear separation of hypercementosis from the adjacent bone as you follow the laminal dura and PDL space, as you can clearly see in figure 9. Hypercementosis is typically associated with patients having hyperocclusion, Paget's disease, and hyperpituitarism. A primary differential diagnosis between hypercementosis and idiopathic osteosclerosis is to identify if there is any root attachment within the lesion. In idiopathic osteosclerosis, it is not associated with root attachment, whereas hypercementosis will be. Cementoblastoma is a benign neoplasm consisting of cementoblasts. These lesions typically occur in the mandibular first molar and premolar region. This lesion consists of a radiolucent rim surrounding the radiopaque mass that is attached to the root. In comparison, idiopathic osteosclerosis lacks a radiolucent capsule and is not attached to the root of the tooth. Also, cementoblastoma may be associated with pain, as 50% of patients complain of associated pain. Idiopathic osteosclerosis lesions are asymptomatic. Generally, there will be no treatment for idiopathic osteosclerosis other than diagnosis by recognition. Even though the idiopathic osteosclerotic lesions will likely remain for years, surgical intervention is not recommended as an action. Taking periodic follow-up radiographs of the idiopathic osteosclerotic lesions would be a good idea to ensure proper diagnosis. These are the references we used in this presentation. These are our picture citations we used in this presentation. Thank you for listening to this presentation on idiopathic osteosclerosis.